This scarecrow can be posed in several different ways because of the pipe cleaners in his arms and legs. His body and his head are made out of felt. The details and the clothing and the features on his face are a combination of felt and construction paper. All of them are glued together with Elmer's glue. I could also add buttons or rickrack or any kind of trim I have on hand. So there's a lot of different ways you can do this. You're going to need two pieces of felt and you're going to be laying your pattern on each one separately and tracing it. It'll be a lot easier, I think, to get the pieces even that way. Line it up with the top edge of the felt, like you see here, and then hold it securely in place. Make sure that it's down flat. And I'm using a marker to draw on the felt, and I think probably if you can get a marker, that's the best thing to do because you don't really have to press down or like go back and forth, and you can get a more accurate line, I think, that way. It won't be pressing against the fabric or the against the pattern so much. But be sure that you go down each line, like I do, like this, and then lift up one of the legs and trace right down the inside of one of the legs so that you get the separation between the legs. Now you're going to get another piece of felt and you're going to repeat that same process. So take your second piece of felt and line it up just the way you did the first one and trace it carefully along the edges just like you did the first one. And try to get it just as accurate as you can because then the two pieces will fit together and if you're careless they might not fit together as well. Also cut each one out separately. I think it'll be easier to get an accurate piece that way and just take your time and cut exactly along the lines that you drew don't rush it because you want to have the pieces as closely to identical as you possibly can. And cut on all the lines that you drew. And if you need to turn it to get a better vantage point for cutting, then do that. Because it doesn't really matter which direction you have it pointed in when you're cutting it. And then I just have that one little notch at the top there, and that's for the neck. Okay, there's the one piece. And the second piece will do exactly the same thing. You're going to need three pipe cleaners. Take two of them and twist them together at the top, like this. And then lay them on top of the piece of felt so that the twisted part protrudes out beyond the neckline and the two ends go out beyond the end of the pant leg. And then take the third pipe cleaner and you want to find exa the exact center of it so fold it in half to find the exact center and remember where that is and then twist it around once like that so that it's equal on each side and that should go down the arms like that. You'll need four little pieces of masking tape and you're going to tape each one of the arms and legs to the felt, like this. And that'll hold them in place when you're gluing the fabric together. And this is important, it'll make it easier for you. Okay, now I'm using Elmer's glue and watch where I'm putting the glue. I'm going down the top of the arm 
and down the side of the body and across the top of the arm. But I'm not going over the ends of the sleeves and I'm not going over the ends of the pants. I want to keep those open for now. And see how I'm close together I'm putting the dots. I'm not making like a real thick line of glue, but I'm putting them fairly close together. And Elmer's glue works really well with this as long as you give it a chance to dry. That's probably the key to the whole thing of getting it to work, is giving it time to dry before you put any stress on the places where you joined it. All right, now really, really carefully take your other piece of felt and line it up on top of the first one. Now just take your time getting that done and smooth it into place and press it down. You might even want to put it underneath something heavy to press down so that it'll dry securely. While that's drying, you can start working on the head. And it's good to have a circle to trace to get it big enough so that you can stuff it, which is what we're going to do. And you need another piece of felt and draw around your circle carefully all the way around like that and do it twice because you're going to cut them out one at a time. I'm not sure how sharp our scissors will be so that's best. And then draw like this on one of them but not on the other one yet You'll see why in a minute. And then cut out this one. And take your time and get your cutting as accurate as your drawing was. Accuracy is really key to this project, I think, as far as getting it to fit together. And you'll have a lot of fun with it, I think. OK. Now, see what I'm going to do. I lay this on top of the other circle and then I'm going to see where I drew on the bottom and I'm going to trace that and then that way it'll give me exactly the same for both pieces and then I have to cut that one out too. All right now I take my glue and I'm putting the dots fairly close together just like I did with the felt on the body and you notice I'm going just down this far but I'm not gluing on the neck I'm leaving the neck open I'm leaving the sides of the neck open just going around the round part and then I put the top on and I press it together and that's going to need to dry before I put any stress on it for stuffing it All right, now for the feet, I take a piece of paper and I'm going to fold it in half and in half again because I want to get four of the same exact shape when I cut it. And I have a pattern here. You can make your own pattern if you wanted to. And I lay it on top and I trace it. And this does not necessarily have to be done with marker because I'm actually using paper. Paper and felt work together really well. When you glue them together, they stay. So it works really well together. All right, now hold it securely and cut it out. And be careful, as always. It'll give you a lot more accuracy. And you should have four pieces when you're finished. Okay, one for the front, one for the back, like that. And they'll fit together like that, okay? And you want to make it, try to make it so that the drawing part doesn't show. Now watch where I put the glue. Just going around like that, but I'm not going across the top. And I'm doing that on two of them. And then I'm going to put them together like this. 
and press it down and they should really dry before you do anything else with them. It'll be a lot easier that way. They won't come apart if they dry first. Now after they're dry you have to open them up a little bit. That's why you didn't glue across the top. And you're going to slide them right over the pipe cleaner. And you're going to slide them up underneath the pant leg a little bit. And you're going to do that with both of them. Open up the top a little bit and slide them up under the pant leg a little bit like that. And if, then lift up the edge of the pant leg and underneath it make a little line of glue dots right along on the construction paper. And do that on both sides. And you can do that on the back too. But I'm just doing it on the front right now. And that should get a chance to dry too. All right, now for the hands, take another piece of paper and fold it in half and then half again and take your pattern for your hand and trace it on or you could make up your own but you want to make it so that it fits the rest of the body when you do it and trace your pattern carefully whatever pattern you have this is just like you did with the boots and then just like you did with the boots hold it and go ahead and cut it out. When you're finished you should have four little mittens and you're going to do the same thing that you did with the boots. Okay watch where I put the glue. I'm not going across the flat part of the mitten because I'm going to slide that on just like I did with the boots. And I glue them together like this and I'm doing the same thing here. Just going to dab it around like that and fit it together like this and they should dry before you do anything else. While the gloves are drying, why don't you work on the face? And remember, you can use scraps of either felt or paper or both. And what I'm using right now, these are paper, pieces of white construction paper. And they're exactly alike because I cut them out together. And you can make any kind of face you want to. In fact, you can cut out different features and lay them on there and see how well you like it before you actually start to glue the whole thing together. See I used paper for the eyes but now I'm using a, a cutting from a scrap of felt to make the nose. And you can decide on what other what kind of nose you want to have yourself. Mine turns out to be one of those triangles and a little bit of glue is going to hold it. Use a lot more glue when you're gluing fabric together or when you're gluing paper to fabric than you do when you're just gluing paper. And the white ovals are paper but these little um, black circles are felt. You can use them kind of interchangeably. And you might want to draw your face on a piece of paper and try different faces before you actually make one and put it on your scarecrow face. All right, now while I was working on my face, my mittens had a chance to dry. And see, I open up the edge of the mitten like I did with the boots. And I push the sleeve back so that I can slide the mitten onto the pipe cleaner. And then I pull the sleeve down over it. And that's one of the reasons it's really important for both the body and the hand to have a chance to dry before you put them together and then I lift up the edge of the sleeve a little bit and 
put a line of glue right in there, right on the paper, like that, and press the sleeve down on top of it. And I'll do the same with the other one. See, I can get it open. I'm being careful with it, though. It's dried, so it won't come apart, but I don't want to tear it either. And push back the sleeve to expose the pipe cleaner. And slide this over the pipe cleaner. And pull the sleeve up over it. And then take a little bit of glue. And apply it on the hand and then put the sleeve down give it a chance to dry all right now hat and hair are both and you need two thicknesses because you're going to have a front and a back and it's really up to you what kind of hat you make but you just want to measure it with the scarecrow's head when you make it so that it fits him so that's why I have him laying with his head on this piece of paper right now so that when I draw the hat I can draw it the right size but there's a lot of different kinds of hats you can try it doesn't have to be just this kind I'm using paper I think that's going to work better and then I'm cutting out both pieces and you want to do this before you stuff it it's going to be a lot easier than if you wait until you've stuffed the head and then try to do this and one thing I probably could have done is I could have made hair for the scarecrow and then put the hat on over the hair and that would have been pretty neat too something you might want to think about see that's how it's going to fit like that okay now watch where I put the glue I'm going to go all the way around all the way across and I want it on the inside too so I'm making dots stay away from puddles of glue that's not going to make things any better then lay it on top like that and then take your other piece and line it up and press it down and that's going to need a chance to dry too anytime you can put weight on it or clamp it you're going to make a stronger bond. You can decorate the hat any way you want. The fancier the better. And now I'm making a hat band out of pink felt scrap that came from when I cut out his body. So I have a paper hat and I have a felt scrap that I'm using to decorate the hat. Okay. Now I can't just do the front and let it go. I've got to also do the back. And so I have to cut another strip. And glue that on the back. And it's a little bit longer than I need for it to be, but once I've glued it on and it's dried, I can trim off the edges or I can trim it before I even glue it down. I want it to line up with the front of the hat band too. And I'm going to go ahead and trim it now. And, and I could add flowers or feathers or any number of things would be fun. Now you can add other things to your scarecrow's outfit. I've got a piece of construction paper that I folded in half. See, like that. And I want it to fit the scarecrow, so I'm going to lay the scarecrow by on top. And I'm just going to make a vest. And I want to mark exactly how far over I want it to come. Okay, now this is where the armholes are. And then I draw the front edge of the vest. And the vests, a lot of times, they hang open. That's what this one's going to do. All right, and now I need to cut it out. Okay, I can cut down the bottom like this. But, oops, I don't want to cut that way. I can cut down 
the side like that. But when I cut out the front, I have to unfold it because the back and the front are going to be different. The front's hanging open, but the back's not. And you could make a jacket for your scarecrow the same way if you wanted to do that, or even a dress. Okay, so that's how it would be. And see, then it's going to fit on the scarecrow like that. Okay, now I need to glue it together. So I'm going to put glue on right there and press it down. And do the same thing on the other side, right along the edge. And then turn it over. And I'm going to put glue down the sides, right on the felt. And press it down. And you should probably press something hard on that while it dries too so that it doesn't come apart before it dries. When things are thicker they tend to do that. And the fun part is adding all kinds of details. You can use scraps of felt and scraps of paper. And the more things you put on the better. Scarecrows typically have like old patch clothes so you can put all kinds of colorful patches on or pockets or belts or suspenders or any kind of detail that you decide you might want to put there. All right, when you're sure that the head is dry enough, you can start to stuff it. And if you're lucky enough to have fiber fill stuffing like this, that's really great. Otherwise, you could probably stuff it with newspaper. And what you want to do is carefully poke it in there and poke it all the way down. Don't just poke it in and then have it be right at the edge there. And you could even take like something and stick down there to poke it in if you wanted to. Um, almost anything that would fit in there would probably work. And you decide how much stuffing you want to put in there, how much is going to fit, and how much is going to work. And poke it down. See, I'm going to try to poke with the end of my marker there, see if that gets it down a little bit more where I want it. And put the rest of the stuffing in. Okay, now you're going to put the head on the body by threading the pipe cleaner up into the head a little bit, however far it'll go. And then the reason that I didn't have you glue down the sides of the two flaps that are the scarecrow's necks is because one has to adhere to the front and one has to adhere to the back. And so you overlap it like that. And then you lift up the felt and you run a line of glue along there and press it down and turn it over and lift up the felt on the other side and run some glue inside there on the felt and then press it down. That's going to need to dry too. Now the more details that you add, the cuter he's going to be. And then you can pose him in a lot of different ways because he has pipe cleaners inside as a framework for the body.